from shock therapy for neoliberals. We've been talking a lot about neoliberalism on this program recently, and with us today is Professor Joseph Stiglitz, the Nobel Laureate in Economics, professor at Columbia University, former chief economist for the World Bank, chair of the U.S. President's Council of Economic Advisors, co-chair of the High-Level Commission on Carbon Prices, and a member of the Independent Commission of the Reform of the International Corporate Taxation and a lead author of the 1995 IPCC Climate Assessment. Uh, uh, Professor Stiglitz's uh, Twitter handle is Joseph E. Stiglitz, S-T-I-G-L-I-T-Z. Uh, Professor, welcome back to the program. It's been, it's been a while since we've talked. I'm so happy to have you with us. I was, nice to be back. Thank you. I was fascinated by the piece that you published over at projectsyndicate.org uh, titled Shock Therapy for Neoliberals. Um, and you, you started out by saying neoliberalism has failed yet another test. You want to define for us neoliberalism and give us, you know, kind of fill in a little bit what what this theory, this economic theory and, and arguably governance theory is, where it came from and, and, and what it has brought us to? Well, it's, it's a simple idea uh, that markets on their own will deliver economic efficiency and broader societal uh, uh, well-being. Uh, I sometimes call it market fundamentalism. Uh, it was a set of ideas that began uh, to prevail in the decades after, uh, beginning with uh, Reagan in the United States and Thatcher in the UK. Um, at the very time where these ideas became popular, work in economics was showing that they were wrong. Uh, the reason that Adam Smith's invisible hand, the notion that pursuit of self-interest would lead as if by an invisible hand to the well-being of all, uh, was uh, that it wasn't there. Uh, the markets in general uh, uh, are not efficient without government oversight, government investment, a very big role for government. Uh, markets play a role, but they have to be tempered. Uh, and uh, we've seen uh, one episode, one piece of evidence after another. The 2008 uh, global financial crisis was a uh, very telling example where unfettered markets uh, brought down uh, uh, the whole global economy. And, and had it not been for the massive government bailouts, where who knows where uh, we would have uh, been. Yeah, and yeah. what I try to argue in this paper or this article um, is that, in fact, so what is happening today and what happened during the pandemic are other pieces of evidence against neoliberalism and why we need to rethink our economic paradigm. Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. By the way, I, 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 I failed to mention you, you've got a new book out, Paper, People, Power and Profits, Progressive Capitalism for an Age of Discontent. Um, uh, it's remarkable. So, uh, yeah, I've, the, the metaphor that I've used to describe this to people is that, uh, you know, if there was no NFL um, regulating football and every team could have as many members on the field as they wanted and could play by whatever rules they wanted, and so one team is, you know, grabbing helmets and kicking people between the legs and the other team is trying to play polite, um, and one team has nine players on the field and the other has 13, um, football wouldn't be very much fun, and it wouldn't work. Um, is that a reasonable metaphor to describe how, you know, ne this neoliberal idea that we should just get rid of the regulators, get rid of the government bureaucrats, you know, the, the, the economic equivalent of the National Football League? Um, is, is that a reasonable way to describe this? Yes, you need rules and referees. Another example is, uh, you know, I live in New York, and if we didn't have stoplights, uh, our city would be in gridlock. Uh, and no one could get anywhere. And uh, you need uh, policemen to enforce uh, the rules. If everybody understands the rules will be enforced, they pay attention to the stoplights, and the stoplights actually facilitate the flow of traffic. Stoplights are a very simple regulation, but a very effective one. They are regulation of who goes first and then who goes next, and, and so they help guide the traffic. Uh, you were just talking a few minutes ago about uh, climate change. Um, unfettered markets say, let 
let any firm pollute the atmosphere as much as they want, but we know the consequences of that. And uh, that's why you need regulations and the price of carbon, public investments and uh, public transportation uh, to, to, to uh, ward off uh, climate change. And the point of this article was to say that we are now confronting another consequence of unfettered markets. We haven't, the way we organized markets, they are not sufficiently resilient. And we saw that in COVID-19 and we're seeing that now with the Russian invasion of Ukraine that uh, our economies, our markets are not responding in the way that we would have hoped. Well, the, the uh, libertarian idea about how to deal with risk, which is, you know, kind of bleeds over to or comes from this whole neoliberal ideology, is that you deal with risks in the courts. Um, that, that, you know, we, we should have no, I mean, literally, there are Republicans who will tell you this and, and libertarians who will preach this, that there should be no regulations, there should be, you know, Milton Friedman has a whole chapter in, in one of his books about, you know, end, end uh, licensure of doctors. <laughs> I mean, you know, there should be no regulations whatsoever. Just, just let, you know, whoever wants to be a play doctor, play doctor. Let wh whoever wants to sell you drugs, sell you drugs. And, uh, you know, uh, with no oversight, because what will happen is when that incompetent doctor starts killing people, or when those bad or polluted drugs start killing people, the, the survivors of the people who died will sue in the courts, and the lawsuits will force people to start behaving well. And so it's, it's dealing with risk after the fact, whereas the precautionary principle, like they, like they employ in Europe, and like we do with licensing doctors here, arguably, um, says, no, we're going to mitigate the risk in advance. How does that play into economics and, li and neoliberalism? Well, I mean, first, the person who is dead can't sue. Uh, right. you, you mentioned if he has uh, heirs, they might be able to sue, but the the damage that has been done to that person uh, may not be uh, yeah, It's unrecoverable, yeah. And uh, we're talking again uh, about climate change. You know, if we have four or six degrees uh, temperature uh, increase, uh, uh, all well and good to sue uh, Exxon or the other oil companies that have contributed to that, but we're not going to be able to get the water back to where it was and the damage uh, it, it can't can't won't be able to be repaired yeah. uh, moreover Exxon will go bankrupt and you can't sue bankrupt uh, companies yeah. so uh, the reality is Milton Friedman's view like so many of his other views was absolutely wrong uh, even recognized at the time not to be supportable by uh uh, economic uh, analysis. Right. Um, you have to take uh, ex ante measures. And uh, we're seeing that right now um, uh, because, uh, for instance, Germany did uh, not pay attention to the risk of becoming excessively dependent on Russian gas. Right. Uh, we are seeing not only uh, energy prices going up, a real concern here is that we are not being able to take a strong actions against Russia as we would like. Yeah, uh, Germany is not willing to engage in a strong sanctions, particularly with respect to gas and, and other so sources of energy, uh, because it's so dependent on Russian gas. And the political consequences of that are enormous. I mean, just think of all the people in Ukraine that will die as a result of our inability to take stronger action against Russia. Who's going to sue? I mean, right. uh, and the, the damage is being done to the global order and being done in Ukraine. Uh, there's no ex post uh, remedy for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're talking with Professor Joseph Stiglitz. He's got a new book out, People, Power, and Profits, Progressive Capitalism for an Age of Discontent. So we have just a, a, about a minute and a half left. 
Um, do, how, what's your analysis of, of where neoliberalism is at right now? I mean, how, how it, it, it took three decades, basically, for Friedman and his buddies to sell it before you know, Reagan bought it in this country. And, and we've had four decades of it as a uh, governing principle, essentially. Um, but it's, you know, people are starting to get wise to this. How, how do you think this is going to flush out? Well, uh, the point you just made is absolutely right. People have realized that neoliberalism uh, didn't work. Uh, not just the failure, uh, global financial crisis in 2008, our lack of resilience that we saw in the pandemic, what we're seeing now uh, in uh, the, the uh, Russian attack against uh, Ukraine right. in terms of uh, energy prices and food prices, the lack of resilience. Shipping 60,000 uh, factories to China. <laughs> <laughs> and and our ability to produce simple products like masks, let right. alone more complicated products like uh, tests and ventilators, um, our our economy has actually been greatly weakened as a result of the uh, dominance of this neoliberalism. So, the optimistic note is that with so many people realizing the multiple dimensions of the failure of neoliberalism that there is a resolve, I can tell you, I feel it within academia, and I hope it's spreading out to the wider world for, the, for another paradigm, a more balanced paradigm, which I try to describe in my book, uh, where uh, you recognize markets are important, but so is collective action, working together uh, through government, taming markets, uh, public investment, regulations, uh, and uh, that combination is more likely to increase our standards of living. There you go. Uh, we know that neoliberalism uh, has failed.